relationships with the Blues Club and, and things like that? What? I didn't really have a relationship with the Blues Club, to be honest. Um, I, I just found that a very difficult situation, yeah. but in the end, it was about football, and all I wanted to do was develop the club. Um, it was my local club, I had my business there. So for the first two and a half years, it was a little difficult. We were, we were sort of changing the systems. The club that had been there was 30, 40 years old. A lot of things that were in place weren't good enough. You know, training, there was no proper training regime, nothing. So we changed all that in the first two and a half years. And then we, we reaped the benefits of that in the last two seasons. You know, it's a club that had never been relegated or promoted. So that was a bit of a challenge for myself. I mean, you want to go to a club like that. And I really like that challenge. But to get so close, to be beaten in the playoffs where we probably should have won the match, and then to take the club to, to one game away from Wembley, for me, was a success. The next step was to actually take the ground from in town because it was being surrounded by flats and houses and try and... The idea is if you can, if you can move first, if you can decide where you're going to go, you, you decide that. If you wait and wait and wait, you could be allocated a site and moved eventually. Not so easy here, but in Gainsborough, it always looked like... Ground Station eventually did make you decide to leave No, I wasn't very well last year. I mean, you know, I'd, um, I had a suspected brain hemorrhage um, in, in the May, and um, I had a bad, a really, really bad month, lost a friend and everything. It was horrendous. And, you know, through scans and that, it, it looked like there was a problem, but it's not. It's, it's, it's not cleared up totally, but I'm 95%. Uh, it's not going to stop me driving forward, not going to stop my ambition, but it did stop me. I've never been poorly in my life. It stopped yeah. me in my tracks for six months. So, And I was the only one driving that stadium forward. I was the only one who was really going, we need to do this. And it's a lot for one person to do. Um, the great thing here is I've got a huge amount of support with the other directors and the team, David, and the rest of the team. It's fantastic. Love it. It takes the pressure off me. Everybody said, why the hell are you going to Scunthorpe? Because it's going to be a harder task. It's not. Got a lot of people here helping me, which is great. Which means I can focus on the stadium. I can focus on the team. Focus on focus on helping Brian if he needs a player. So I think I've learned a lot as regards to football, and it, and it is quite strange for I suppose the chairman to come up right the way through, um, including managing Gainsborough for a couple of times, and actually had a fifty percent record. But I don't. <laughs> I shan't tell Brian that. <laughs> He'll hear about it soon. So, but I've done all aspects of it, coaching, managing, and right the way through. So I, I know what football's about. Now what I need to do is try and use all that experience that I've had and working with the council, working with those relationships with businesses is to try and get the best deal for the club and try to get the best ground for the club. There's one move we, won't want to, we don't want to do again. You know, this time we want to move and that's it, have everything around us. Thank you. The obvious question now, um, obviously we suffered when Steve Wharton was ill. Are you happy uh, your health will be able to uh, hold out for the job? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Yeah, it's not, uh, you know, I've not had a heart attack or anything, it's just yeah, an issue that I've managed to get over. I've, got, I've still, you know, brought, I'm on pills. I don't know how many other people are on pills, but I'm on pills now. So, <laughs> but I'm, I'm probably on a few more now, actually. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, in the end, we don't know. I can walk out and get run over by a bus. Well, not around here, there's no bus service. But, um, but, but you know, anything can happen any any time of time of the day. But I'm, physically, mentally, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm here for the next ten years. I'd love to be here for the next ten years. Yeah, that, that's my plan. In accepting financial restraint, what do you feel is the right squad to do? Well, just looking on the back, we've got 29, 29 members of our squad. It's a big squad, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Um, ideally, you'd like to go in with a, a sort of 22 man squad. Um, but of course, we've had loan players come in um, and we've strengthened up and got injuries, long term injuries. We've been, we seem to have been hit by injuries that haven't been one week ones and two week ones, but have ended up six week ones and eight week ones. And that's it, we haven't had any small injuries. It seems that we've had ones that have put people out for six to eight weeks. And we, we are thin on the ground in some places. Um, obviously we're thin on the ground in the midfield, um, right and left back now, we haven't really got covered because, uh, because of Nolan's injury. So, you know, we're hopefully working on that at, that, at this moment. What's the club's philosophy on attracting more fans and new fans? Because historically we've, we've not really gone out to the communities, you know. I, ideally there was talk about having a, a ticket office in the town to, to make it more accessible for people to get tickets um, and obviously more deals to encourage families to come down. Because at the end of the day the kids are the future fans of the club. So, you know, is there a big drive to actually trying to attract more fans in? I know you're sort of obviously having this meeting now with the fans. Yeah. 
but can the club do more to try and attract more fans to get the revenue coming in? Because you know, obviously Stumpak fans are quite fickle. If we're doing well, we come, and if if not, all, all fans are fickle. Every fan's fickle in their own way. You know that, that it, that's that's the, that's the game. Try and bring the more fans in. I think this is this is again the question is: Do we stay here or do we move? Because what have you got as your your selling point? What what is the selling point of Scunthorpe's ground and everything? Have we got anything that can drive in those families? No, we need a bigger bar. We need we need better we need better facilities that we can put families in food. Maybe on a day, fresh and nursery facilities. All those things to bring in families. We're thinking about, but again, if if we're not here, if we're not doing it here. Let's wait and get it right in the next place. It does mean that we have to be a little bit patient. Which I know some people think that it's just a, a ruse and it's just a way of sort of covering up the cracks, but it's not. We are definitely got to do one or the other. If we don't move from here, we will make sure these facilities are improved. If we do move, there's no point in putting the money in here. Let's use it for the new facilities and get it right. Yeah, I thought about moving the sign a bit nearer to the roundabout, possibly to actually promote it more, because unless you actually... We only own, own the road up to the to where the sign is. It's council owned the, the rest of the road beyond that. Uh, just, to, just to make it more... We, we've had some talks more with, feasible, with so the council about... When the match is out. Yeah, we've yeah. had some talks with the council about having signs um, around Scunthorpe um, and they've gone reasonably well. They're going to come back to us with some potential sites uh, and costing to have these signs put up. There'll be LED signs. We are working on it. It just it seems like I'm, it seems like I've been here forever and it's only been about four months. Mr. Chairman, would the Jackie Brown sort uh, sign be moved as well? If we move, will that, will that go with us? Uh, it, it, we haven't considered it. Obviously, we named the, the road after him. The road would potentially still be there, so whether we that road was called something else and we were then relocated Jack, so, uh, Jack Brownsfield way to, to the new stadium and we're not sure as yet. We could always name it after somebody else, we? Um, different roads. At Brian Law's close. <laughs> 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 well the most important thing is that what we're gonna do is as we as we move forward is we're gonna listen. You know, we listen. I know it's different. I know the facilities here could be better. I mean, we've we've done some improvements already on on, on some of the uh, toilet facilities, and we're going to continue. And we will look at the catering to make them a little bit more appealing. Um, but again, it just see it's where we are in a few months' time. If in a few months' time we're sitting down and we're a bit further along the line with the council and everything's looking great, then we'll just do something to help you know get the stadium along because it doesn't seem worth doing anything else. And then. We'll sit down with you and say, right, okay, how can we improve your match day experience? What would you like? If you arrive at 12 o'clock, half past 12, what do you want? What sort of bar do you want? What sort of food do you want? And that's what we'll start to do. And that's hopefully where I can use the supporters and the Iron Truck, all those groups together to actually help us identify those, those areas. Net cost. I haven't got a clue, but I know it's going to be a lot. I think it's very difficult to, to say what this area is worth at the minute. And this, this isn't in the equation at this moment in time because we need to, to live in it before we move. So once, hopefully, we've moved, then we can look at the site and say, right, OK, it's worth X. That's what we'll sell it for. You know, if I can if I can keep this out of the equation, so we've got this as our base, then that will come straight back into the pot in the new stadium. <laughs> it is it is very difficult to, to put any figures on it because we are such an early stage. You know, we're a month in, about three or four meetings. That's all. Is anyone interested in buying the site? I'm sure there will be, whether now or in 18 months down the line. And m and are, are there, you know, it is going to be a very popular site. There's a big footfall around here, so that will suit, suit many things, whether, whether that's commercial, commercial, whether it's apartments or residential offices, I don't know. But, you know, we'll come to that situation. Um, obviously, the papers jumped at it and say it's a sell-off for retail. That's not necessarily what it will be, um, but it's whatever that is at that time. And what, the great thing about it, if we haven't got to get a figure off this, if we just have to sell it for the best, then and we get a stadium for it. I don't think anybody will moan. You know, the new stadium will probably cost someone in the region about 20, 22 million. So, a lot of money. A lot of money. Will that, will that affect um, recruiting players or anything like that? Will they want to grow? No. no. Anyway, we're going to try and, try and... The most important thing is that whatever funding I bring to the club, I can, I can put into the team. 
I think that's that's the most important thing. I don't want to be putting money into into the stadium. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to own the stadium or anything like that. What I want to do is make sure that the team's successful. So my money that comes into the club needs to go into that, and not really into the in, into that. And they know that the council know where I stand on. This um, new player that we've brought in, there's a lot of rumours last night that it was Dave Sayers from Doncaster. Is there any comment on that? I'll answer that one in half an hour. Yeah, in half an hour. So I'm going to get in trouble again. That's how you play it. Next question. Follow Jamie. Hello, Doug. Because um, several areas we outsource at the moment. Are we looking at being back in house again? You seem so obviously sometimes playing the outsourcing of these sort of faded, but actually that's how the club looks. I, I think, yeah, when you look at other stadiums, they, they outsource a lot of their restaurant and their food, they outsource a lot of things. And the, the fortunate thing for us has been so many stadiums built in the last sort of three or four years, we can have a look at all of them. And most of them that we go to wish that they'd have kept stuff in house. Yeah. Because not only does it employ lo people locally, and usually fans of the club, but what it does, it just gives you that a, a wider degree to be able to cook something different or sell something different. And I think if we could do that and keep it in-house, then, yeah. then we will. Um, and we will look at that. We will look at that.